بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون صدق الله الذين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت الأليم الحكيم We start by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has granted us the opportunity to read Isha with congregation and he has now allowed us to sit in the masjid and learn a little regarding our religion Inshallah, we will be answering the questions that you guys have sent in. So the first question is, I am interested in going to university, however I cannot afford the fees. Therefore, I would have to apply for financial help towards my studies. Is this permissible? If not, what other avenues are there available for Muslim students? Please, Jazakallah. So the question is, is regarding the permissibility of student loans. In short, and to put it very sweetly, student loans will be haram, will be impermissible due to the fact that they are interest bearing. Because for example, you are receiving £21,000 and for example, you are going to pay back £30,000. So this is interest. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Kareem, Wa Allah That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared riba as haram, interest as haram. And in many places in the Quran Kareem, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullah, wa dharu ma baqiya min riba in kuntum mu'mineen. Or you who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and leave the outstanding interest if you truly believe فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا فَأْذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives such a strong warning that if you do not leave this interest then beware of a war with Allah and His Messenger So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes interest and the common misconception here regarding student loans etc is that I am only you know giving interest I'm not the one taking interest I'm not making any fayda and any benefit from this so we have mentioned this before in one of our Q&A's uh, a principle that we use that which is haram to take is also haram to give and apart from that principle itself, if we want to be a li little more precise and more clear cut, then listen to what the Prophet said. لَعَنَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ آكِلَ الْغِبَا وَمُوكِلَهُ وَكَاتِبَهُ وَشَاهِدَهُ وَقَالَهُمْ سَوَاءٌ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ That the Prophet وسلم, cursed the one who takes interest, obtains interest, and the one who gives interest also, and the one who records the interest, writes it down, and the one who is a witness to an interest bearing deal. And the Prophet said that all of these people are the same. So, this misconception that we have is incorrect as well. So what other alternatives are there for us Muslims? The first one that I will mention, not many people have talked regarding this. The first one that I would advise is you can take zakat from your friends and family. Now this step has a bit of a nuance, meaning what the apparent meaning is, it is slightly different to that. And this does not mean that you will take zakat before 
you actually start university, rather once you start university, once you have actually been charged and you are now respect, have become responsible for paying back this debt and paying back this money, then that sum will be declared as a debt on your head. And in terms of eligib uh, eligibility for zakat, one of the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاءُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا وَالْمُعَلَّفَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ وَالْغَارِمِينَ that one of the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that you can, can give zakat to are those who are in debt. So here, when you take this responsibility of paying back this sum, usually these people who are taking these loans in the first place, they will not have a lot of money. So the ruling will be that if you subtract this debt from your assets, if after subtracting the debts, you do not meet the nisab and you are in debt, then you will be allowed to take zakat. So for example, you have, let's just say, £20,000. You might have that money, but you have a debt of £21,000. Now you are in debt. So you will be allowed to take zakat, even though in reality you in your possessions right now, you might have £20,000. So, taking zakat, that is one solution. That you can ask for zakat from your friends and family. Instead of taking a student loan. Number two, the second option would be to generally ask your friends and family for a loan. See who can provide you, who may be able to help you. Somebody may be able to give you a few thousand pounds. Somebody may be able to give you more, somebody slightly less. Another option would be to take a gap year. And obviously this begins, like I spoke to the brother in person, who still has a few years left in university. So this begins in preparing from way back, preparing in advance. So you can take a gap year, and in that year you can earn. Now, the question is, why do people not, don't do this? Why do people don't do this? So the answer to this is because they realize that if I take a whole gap year, I work, all of this money that I am going to earn in that year, where are they going to go? In paying off my student loan. I'm not going to be able to use this money to buy a car, to you know, buy clothes for myself. For, for myself, I'm not going to be able to use it. There's such an easier way for me, and that would be just to take the student loan. So they give preference to the student loan because it is easier. They do not look at what's halal and what's haram. And this reminds me of a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he says, حُجِبَتِ النَّارُ بِالشَّهَوَاتِ وَحُجِبَتِ الْجَنَّةُ بِالْمَكَارِ That the fire has been, you know, covered by temptations. That the meaning of this is that it is very easy to enter the hellfire because, you know, everything that we are tempted with, that leads us to the hellfire. Whereas to enter Jannah bil Makari, we will have to go through difficulties. Waking up in the morning for Fajr, something difficult, giving zakat, something, you know, our money that we've earned. So, again here, people do not want to take out the gap here to earn, because they would prefer to go for an easier route of taking the student loan. If I work for a full year, the money is not really mine, I'm using it to pay off my student loan. So there are the few alternatives regarding student loans. However, the question now remains is that if you are unable to apply for a if you are unable to pay back your university fees using these alternatives, what can you do now? So if you are unable to do this, you should now approach a mufti and explain your situation, explain your scenario to him and they may be able to allow you to take a student loan under the purview الزرورات تبيهل محضورات that there is a doctrine and that doctrine is that necessity allows forbidden things now, again, there are two types of scholars here. 
some scholars will say is studying in a, u a university really a necessity? We see so many people who didn't go to university, they have such good jobs. They are earning, they are able to pay their bills, they are, they are able to, you know, fulfill their needs. And on the other hand, there will be scholars who will say, no, it is a necessity, it is a requirement. We need Muslim uh, doctors, we need Muslim police officers. So they will say yes. So there are two types. But again, if there is such a situation, you will have to approach a mufti. Number two, is there, are, there is another question regarding this, is there are some people who take the student loan or they ask that we are intending to take the student loan but we have no intention of repaying back the loan. And by this they mean is that the threshold required, that if I do not earn such an amount of money, I do not have to repay back the loan. So they have that intention that I'm never going to earn that much. And this is usually more applicable to, you know, uh, those Maulanas usually or people that who later on work in uh, the Islamic fields. Like so many, alhamdulillah, in our Darloom, we have somebody who did a master's degree and now he's teaching in Darloom. So they don't intend on earning that amount that is required. So will you be able to take the student loan? So again, there are two opinions here. Some say that once you have entered an interest-bearing loan, you have made a commitment, you know, you should usually, the ruling is that once you enter a deal, a loan, you should repay back as soon as possible. So you've entered the deal, it's still like you are going to pay it back, so you wouldn't be allowed. And the others say that because you don't actually intend on paying back any interest, then there will be some leeway in this. And I've spoken to one of my teachers, and he said, yes, there will be leeway in this. However, you know, we will not encourage this, you know, for example, just in case you do end up earning that much, then you will have to pay interest. So that was regarding student loans. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create means from his ghayb, allow us to stay away from riba, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a good education and a good job.